Welcome to Engineering Funda family. This video is a part of Microprocessor 8086 video lecture series. And in this video, I'll be going to explain you execution of interrupt in 8086. So each and every steps of execution of interrupt that I'll be going to explain you step by step. So what I want is you should see this video till last to understand what is the exact process of execution of interrupt with 8086. Here, my dear students, when you execute main program and while you are executing main program in between program, if interrupt comes, then 8086 will have to give service to this interrupt and how that service will be given to this interrupt. For that, there are few basic steps that you should know. So let us see it step by step. So my dear students, here, let us say we are having main program that we execute it over here and here with main program there are few basic things that you should know main program is having physical address and that is there with code segment register cs and instruction pointer ip this main program's address is there as per cs into 10 hex plus instruction pointer so you can say higher address of main program is there with CS and lower address of main program that is there with IP. This IP is offset pointer and this code segment register that indicates you what will be starting address of code segment, right? So you can say higher address of this main program that is there with code segment register and lower address that is there with instruction pointer. Now when you execute program step by step one by one instruction let us say interrupt comes over here now you'll be observing with 8086 there are various interrupts there are total 256 interrupts int0 to int 255 and all these interrupts are having well defined vector address and that vector address is stored in interrupt vector table for interrupt vector table I'll make one separate video here right now just consider all the interrupt is having well-defined memory location and that is stored in interrupt vector table right so what 8086 will have to do 8086 will have to take address from this IVT and at that address whatever program is there that 8086 will have to execute but it is not that simple my dear students here there are few more basic things that we need to see here we are executing main program during main program as if interrupt comes then first of all 8086 will have to execute current instruction so once it executes current instructions there are few basic things that you should know first is what is status of this program so status of this program that will be there in flag register and second is what will be next address of instruction so next address of instruction that will be over here and that will be there with ip and cs right now higher address will be there with cs and lower address is there with ip that you will have to consider right as code segment holds higher address and ip holds lower address now here with main program status of program and physical address of this next instruction that we need to store on stack why we need to store it on stack the reason is once you complete interrupt service you will have to come at this physical address along with same status of flag the reason is you don't need to erase your main program you need to execute main program as it was there only thing is once interrupt comes you'll have to give service to this interrupt once service is completed you execute main program right so here we need to store status of program means flag on stack as well as we need to load this physical address on stack you see how we do that so first of all what we do is we perform push flag so here 8086 is doing this operation right we as a programmer we are not writing this instruction 
8086 will execute push flag first. So what it does, it will be loading status of flag on stack first. After that, what it does is, it will clear inter flag and trap flag. Why it clears inter flag and trap flags? My dear students, when it clears IF, it will be doing disable INTR pin. What it means? Now, INTR cannot give interrupt to 8086 as already this interrupt is there under service. And trap flag will be cleared over here. Why? The reason is here service to interrupt cannot be done as per single step. Right. So, you will have to execute this service to interrupt in a one go. You don't need to do this as per step by step. So, first of all, 8086 will clear IF and TF. After that, this physical address of next address with this main program that will be loaded on stack. So, here you see first we are doing push CS and then we do push IP. So, here what we do is we load physical address on stack. You see here we have loaded physical address on stack. Now, you might be having question why we have loaded this code segment register first. After that, we have loaded IP on this stack. So, why this sequence is there? So, you should know my dear students with 8086 or with any Intel processor, we are loading physical address as per lower address at lower byte and higher address at higher byte. So, what I have explained here, you see, I have told you segment register that holds higher address and instruction pointer that holds lower address. So, lower address that we load at lower value of address location and higher address that we holds at higher value of address location of stack. So, you see when you do push operation, address will get decremented and here CS will be loaded first as it holds higher address and after that IP will be loaded as it holds lower address. Right, that's why sequence is like this. Right. Now, once you have loaded this flag and physical address of main program, all you need to do is you need to see interrupt vector table. So, 8086 will load physical address of program from interrupt vector table. How it will be loading physical address? So, it will be taking it from interrupt vector table. So, ISR interrupt service routine that will be taken from interrupt vector table. For that, I will make separate video and in that, I will explain you how it will take physical address. Right now, consider for ISR 8086 will take physical address from interrupt vector table. So, IP and CS now loaded from interrupt vector table. So, now you can execute interrupt program. So, here we are executing interrupt program and at last, I return is executed, which indicates interrupt service is completed. See, it is not RET, it is IRET, means interrupt return. There is a difference between normal return and interrupt return. That even I'll explain you once I complete this. Once you execute I return, 8086 will have to jump back to main program, but it cannot directly jump to main program. It will have to take this address as well as it will have to take status of flag, right? So, what it does is, it will be doing pop IP, pop CS and pop flag. Why it executes it in this sequence? The reason is, now you see, stack is operated as per last in first out. So, now you will have to do pop IP first. After that, you will have to do pop CS. After that, you will have to do pop flag as per last in first out. Right, so this sequence will be there and once it does this pop, program control will get over here along with status of program and you can execute main program. Here my dear students, let me explain you why there is I written. 
my dear students in normal call we do pop cs and pop ip but we don't do push flag right so when you write only written at that time it will not pop flag over here right so with normal subroutine you will be having transfer of control from routine over here where you don't need to see what was the flag which was there over here right but in case of interrupt execution you will have to retrieve status of program as well right that is one thing that you need to know in terms of normal subroutine and interrupt subroutine see interrupt subroutine is subroutine right but that is bit different compared to normal subroutine one more thing my dear students that you need to see here with main program we have segment register and instruction pointer right so this main program is having segment register and instruction pointer and this inter program that is also having segment register and instruction pointer but my dear students segment of this inter program is different compared to main program so whatever subroutine is happening with this inter execution that will be inter segment subroutine why the reason is segment of this main program and segment of this inter program will be different right so interrupt in 8086 is inter segment branch or routine that you can say why the reason is here segment are different right so here it is very essential that you will have to do push segment and pop segment right otherwise if it is there in same segment in that case my dear students you just have to do push ip only and pop ip only but as segments are different you will have to do push ip push cs as well as pop ip pop cs but because of this interrupt is inter segment branch you will have to load segment as well as instruction pointer so these are the basics that you will have to keep in your mind i hope it is clear to you still if any query is there what i want is you just post that in comment box so that i can get back to you thank you so much for watching this video